Welcome back to Why Blank Lost. I'm David Bloomberg, and while I don't know what it's like to have someone else play an idol for me, my co-host, Jessica Lewis, conveniently does. I conveniently do, don't I? And can I say it's an incredibly wonderful and sad feeling all at the same time because so many emotions are being processed in that very moment. You're like, wow, I just almost got voted out. Wow, somebody else saved me. Wow, I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> There's so many things. So many things. So yes, I know how that feels. Well, you know, we've talked about this before. If David Wright hadn't saved you, Mm -hmm. It's quite possible we wouldn't be talking right now. I think uh, that's very possible. Um, I So thank you, David Wright, for allowing me to have David Bloomberg time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a little crazy. You know, I mean, I, not that I would, of course, pick and choose a co-host according to where send, someone ends up, because it's, it's all about intelligence and personality. Oh, uh, thank you. But uh, I, I just don't know if you would have had a full chance to show yours otherwise. I, that is a very fair, fair point, considering that would have been a very early departure to my yes. game. Yes. So, yeah. So thank you, David, for allowing me. I, if you're hearing some noises, it's my dogs. I apologize. <laughs> but uh, but yes, yeah, so I, I was allowed a much longer time in the game. But I will say it is an interesting thing to really consider how it would have potentially affected final three situations, right? I've always mm -hmm. found this very fascinating if you are sitting in the final three with someone who has saved you with an idol. And we've heard players talk about this, that how easy it would be to just point to the person next to you and say, well, they're only here because I saved them with an idol. Right. So as far as gameplay and motive, I can understand having that control over someone, right? Mm -hmm. And so this idea that David saved me and then people thought I needed to return the favor, I was like, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> like, I understand why people said those things, but he certainly had a leg up on me that I don't want to be sitting in the final three, not just for that reason, but right. for a lot of other reasons in regards to David Wright. But yes, so it is certainly a game move, not just for that particular move, but for what it does... Um, provide to you right. as the game moves forward right now we'll talk about this uh, later obviously but of course as it turned out carson didn't need the idol played on him mm -hmm. but again we'll we'll talk about that later because what i want to talk about now is i got another prediction right oh lord here we go yes you were right yeah i was david right, bloomberg david, was right you're right <laughs> david you're right david you're right <laughs> david you're right david you're right <laughs> I conveniently uh, you, have that. You and your editing now is just out of control. <laughs> oh, I had that from a long time ago. Uh, that was from a long time ago. But yes, I, I could always sing it to you again if you would enjoy that, I guess. Yeah, but well, you just played this. it, so we're for, fine. For, yeah, forever. <laughs> um, and yeah, oh. and by the way, we can also just ignore the previous times I said Danny was going. When yeah, because it was Danny for like three weeks in a row, I think. I, I think I skipped a week in there. I don't remember. But this is the oh only gosh. one. Just just focus on the positives. Just this one. Yeah. Just no. Um, Charlotte, I'm so sorry. My dogs are being <laughs> obnoxious. You can't go over there. Stay over here. OK, you're going to have this is what happens when they get left yeah. home by themselves for the day. And then I feel so terrible because no one else is home with me right now. Anyway, so yes. we're moving on. So my dogs are surrounding me and being very loud. I apologize <laughs> to the listeners, but they're happy. They're very happy. OK, well, good. Uh, so speaking of focusing on the positives, I have to say this was one of the best episodes of the season, possibly oh, the very yes. best of the season. Mm -hmm. um, we got a lot of strategy, social interaction, laughter, tears. Um, yes. You know, we've we've had a good stretch of no twists and the players yes. have played. It's amazing. I really is, do feel like we saw so many of them. Yes, that is Survivor. Why I'm wearing my Survivor shirt in I honor of that. You know, plus it's got the flames that can be reflected in in uh, Carson's classes. I know. Again, I was like, oh, my gosh, these these <laughs> things that they're, they're doing to us, making us convinced mm -hmm. that that will happen. But I do really feel like so many players shined this week, which is lovely because we have missed so much 
game mechanics because of, and when I say game mechanics, like I'm talking about people mechanics mm-hmm. that are playing the game as opposed to trinkets and things and, and extras. And I really, yeah. really loved getting to watch that and just see it flourish. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Now we are, of course, here today uh, to discuss why Danny lost, otherwise known as what he could have, would have, should have done. Uh, oh, there is no would have, could have, should have. There is. Uh, to uh, and to Not do that, in Danny's mind. Uh, I know. Uh, <laughs> we will we'll compare his game uh, to my rules for winning that I originally wrote way back after season one and have been updating ever since. Uh, every time someone could have, would have, should have done something. Um, and we take all the information, non-spoiler information, from what we saw on TV interviews, social media, secret scenes. And this week, we have good information from literally all of those. Mm. Um, the newest version of the rules can be found uh, on the website by going to our dedicated page, robhaswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed. Click on the link bubble for Survivor 44 rules. So before we get to those rules, though, we always have some other things to discuss from this week's episode. And let's start with another one of my predictions that came true. Um right david you're right <laughs> oh <laughs> this is so unnecessary um I, I knew carolyn would take a little bit of time to be upset and then come right back together with the other tika and yeah. she even did it quicker than i thought like overnight literally overnight yeah it was very fast it was definitely very fast but i think it also is very Carolyn, right? Like, I feel yes. like that's very much the way that she is and the way she processes things. And she was very honest about how she felt about oh, it. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it was interesting to see her kind of come full circle and then end up right where she was prior to with the same people. Yeah. I mean, as I was watching, I, I felt like Jam Jam was pushing her a bit too hard and arguing when he should have just been like, they're there, Carolyn, they're there. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, don't say she should be over it like five minutes after it happened, you know, like, yeah, that was a little too soon. It, it reminded me of your season with mm. Hannah pushing on Adam and Zeke and mm-hmm. like trying to justify what she did when they just wanted to be left alone. Yeah, mm-hmm. there there is something to be said about respecting someone's like moment and mm-hmm. their privacy or their time when things have just happened and letting them process it because Jam Jam had all of the time in the afternoon to know what was going to be happening right. and to process it in his own mind. She didn't have that opportunity. She's she's reacting to what she just saw happen. So, yes, there's a, there's a lot to be said about allowing people that time to process those moments. Yeah. I mean, Carson just kind of sat with her, apologized and was nice. He didn't, mm-hmm. you know, try to just right. at least from what we saw, didn't mm-hmm. didn't try to justify or debate or anything like that. Right. Um, now, on the show, we just saw that Carolyn was suddenly OK the next morning. Uh, but there was also a secret scene of Carolyn the next morning as she woke up and spent some time thinking. Uh, now, what was interesting to me was that she then seemed to blame herself for overreacting and being rude to Jam Jam. And, mm. you know, said, well, you know, if it had been me, I wouldn't have done it any differently. That is awfully generous of her. Um, because like I said, I really do think she deserved to have those few minutes to just be mad, get it out of her system and then move on. Yeah, for sure. But we are getting a lot of Carolyn content, I will say. Good. Mm -hmm. I know it is. It's great, but it's also very (laughs) interesting. I mean, Mm -hmm. she was the focal point of this episode, so that's not She definitely was. She's been the focal point of a lot of episodes, I feel like. Well, I mean, she's Carolyn. Right. Uh, The whole yeah, crab finger. <laughs> lobster finger, yes. <laughs> lobster finger. <laughs> you know, don't. Um, oh, I thought you were going to. Listen, if you had a lobster finger at the ready. That would be something. Too many when, I could have connected like straws together or something, but uh, I didn't. You could have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're crafty uh, in addition to your editing skills. Yes. Come through. Um, now, you know, continuing with. Carolyn and Jam Jam and Carson, the Tika three. I do have a few more thoughts about some other situations we saw them in. Uh, within that trio, it's interesting to me because 
Carolyn and Carson seem to have this special tight relationship. Mm -hmm. And Carolyn and Jam Jam seem to have this special tight relationship. It's possible that Jam Jam and Carson have a special tight relationship, Mm -hmm. but that wasn't made as clear, you know, as the other two. But I, I feel like these are the bonds that are the reason they have managed to come into the merge as a minority and stay together all the way to this point and possibly beyond. Well, and I think it's fascinating that this core three, one has stayed as close as they have been, but also I was thinking about it earlier today. They are all playing rather spectacular games. Mm-hmm. They And it's it's incredible to see three people playing great games, very different games, but obviously they are intertwined because they're playing the games together. So I am very very excited to see how this shakes out because if there's a chance that we end up with a Tika final three, that will be an incredible final tribal council just because the variations on their games that they've all had, Mm -hmm. but how they have all intertwined with each other. So my dog is busting out of here and I'm just going to let her go. (laughs) All right. Um, Now, uh, mathematically, when it comes to the Tika three, I have to say I'm confused by what they said, because both Jam Jam and Carson independently talked about how if they survived this vote, they would have the majority. Uh, I know. Who's doing the math? Yeah, they're three out of six. That's not a majority. They'll have good control. They have a plurality because they have three compared to two compared to one. That's not a majority. Carson, you're a NASA engineering student. You of all people should know this. But he's hiding how smart he is, remember? Yeah, but that was talking to us. I don't know. I did. I did pick up on that as well. And I thought, yeah. mm, wait, there's six left in the game. I mean, How is come this on, a people. A lawyer picked up on a math issue. <laughs> Fair. Thanks. This is why I became a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of lawyers who say that I became a lawyer because I couldn't do math. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Not a math fan. <laughs> but I but I do know that three is not a majority of six. That's right. So, That's right. Yeah. There this you seems go. rather simple. Yeah. But yeah, so it is, it will be interesting to see that what's going to happen next week because of the potential three, three split. If that exists, oh, we'll but we also, much later. Yeah. I know we will, I'm not giving anything away. I'm just saying, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as well. Yes. yes. Um, and there were speaking of interesting, several interesting and fun things at tribal council with the best, of course, being Carolyn, telling people off and setting them straight, including Jeff Probst. Yes, um, that was fascinating. I was literally laughing and clapping as she went off. And, you know, my wife was probably upstairs wondering what the heck was going on. And I saw that uh, the RHAP gathering uh, in uh, Toronto, you know, they were doing the same thing. Lots of mm-hmm. laughing and clapping as she was yes. uh, as she was putting Jeff in his place. That's something you just don't see very often, which is lovely as well. <laughs> I think a lot of people. And by the way, Jeff, I'm also mad that you did this and this and this. Yes. (laughs) And and I do. I do think that it's it is interesting that most people, I think, are are frightened. And I I say frightened. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily the right word. But when Jeff asks you a question at tribal council, there's this momentary thing that everyone has to kind of process. Like, this is my moment to shine. Uh, Maybe I say something great that they that they'll put in the episode. Maybe they, I say something that's not great that they put in the episode, but it's, it is interesting to have Mm -hmm. that give and take with Jeff and for her to just be like, yeah, I'm just going to tell you that I am mad at you. And this is the way I feel was nice to see because we don't often see that. We usually see analogies or, some strange comparisons to yes. people driving cars or planes or something like that. Or boxing in this case. Yes. Yes. Mm, that's that was one that came out as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, now, also in tribal council, uh, it it sure looked like everybody made it very clear that if Carson makes it to the end, he wins. You know, they they all sing his praises. Jam Jam said they're in awe of him and everything he's done at his age. Mm. They don't even know all he's done because he kept right. some of it secret. Yeah, uh, I, I was I was really taken aback with all of that because I do think that it could backfire for him, right? Just because they are so impressed of everything he's been able mm-hmm. to accomplish and they truly don't know 
who he is and what he has accomplished. So I I don't know if that could backfire or just work out being really, really great. Oh, I him. was thinking backfire like this is great news if he makes it to final three, but terrible news if people realize they can't let him get to final three. Well, um, and that, yes, and that can certainly backfire as well. If all of a sudden they're like, oh, geez, now is, we need to watch you know, out for him. Sure. What some of them were trying to do. I mean, Danny literally said, you could clone me and put me up against Carson and I'd vote for Carson. And it's like, mm. Mm, okay. Um, yeah. You know, but then there were also, not at Tribal Council, but beforehand, when before Jam Jam won immunity, there were a number of people saying the same thing about him. Oh, he's the nicest yeah. guy. Everybody loves him. You can't let him get to final three. Mm -hmm. These folks have a little bit of work to do. Yeah. If they think that two of the remaining four players, they can't beat at the end. Yeah. And also that, to when do I say that... the other, the other four remaining, if they, you know. Sure. I mean, at least about. the things that were being said about Jam Jam were not being said at tribal council, mm -hmm. but you're saying these things in front of the jury. And which is also, I think, problematic because if the jury's not thinking that now they might be thinking that. So all of it is a very strange gameplay in that moment to really shine such a light on him. Mm -hmm. Unless you're planning on taking him out next time. Yeah, you're certainly creating some issues. But I'm just very I, I don't know if he's hiding it. And this is what my struggle with with Carson is because they seemed so much in awe of him. Is he hiding too much of his game? Because what they have seen him accomplish, they're like, oh, look at everything he's done for such a young kid. Isn't that so sweet? Or are they truly impressed at the game that he's played thus far, mm -hmm. despite the fact that he's young? I, so I I just don't know if so it's like, going are, to Are you worried that he, issue. he's going to come out and say, well, actually, I'm on a special... Uh, uh, you know, co-op internship with NASA and I've done this and this and I studied all the puzzles and 3D printed them and they're going to be like, oh, well, now we're not as impressed with you anymore. Well, I can't imagine he would do that because that would definitely, right. I think, be the the wrong move mm -hmm. for him to make. So I just don't know if he's if he's knocked himself down so much that it's like anything Carson does. They're like, oh, it's Carson. That's so mm -hmm. sweet. Instead of just appreciating the gameplay like there's this you you shouldn't be able to accomplish that because you're Carson and you're so young right. and we would never expect that from you I don't know I I'm not sure if that's going to be the read but I just thought all of the comments that they were making were kind of not patronizing but there was something interesting about the way they were being said and I just don't know if it's something that Carson is going to then have to fight through if he's in the final three I mean I think he has purposely brought that about like mm. he has purposely played the innocent at times i mean right i remember earlier in the season when he was like oh i just don't know what's going on anymore you mm -hmm. know and and stuff like that you know where i think he has uh, there's a word i'm thinking of and i i can't think of it it's but it, it he has just brought about this the the way they're thinking and formed the it facade yeah that I, i'm just yeah. Uh, so in the middle of a podcast, it's not a good time to lose a word. That is like, ah, where is it? <laughs> um, it's like Jamie with her idol. Come back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I do want to clarify, though, by the way, speaking of, you know, just you know, so we don't get the comments online. When I said two of the remaining four, I know there are six players there. I was like thinking of like Jamie and Lauren. If they're yeah. thinking that way, it's two of, you know, if yes. they're thinking of mm -hmm. going to the end together, two, and you can't beat two of the remaining four people, you're in trouble. So yeah. yes, two of the six, obviously. So We but, can math. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to make that clear. You know, after, <laughs> after lecturing about majority, I didn't want to get lectured about doing the math wrong. Um, so now on a uh, less happy note, uh, from tribal council and uh, you know, speaking of, of Jamie earlier, um, we do need to revisit her and the topic I've been talking about for a week or two now, um, you know, because she continued with the nonsense about, Oh, it's always different every time. All while Tika mm. runs over them as a solid Alliance using yeah. the bonds that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Stephen yeah. and Evie also discussed this in know it alls and, you know, came to the same conclusion that I'd been saying, uh, you know, Jamie and anyone else in this camp just thinks this because they're out of the loop. And that yeah. loop is named Tika. Mm -hmm. And yes, I mean, and we are obviously 
seeing it from all sides right because we're sitting on our couches watching yeah. but i don't know how she's not seeing it and it was very clear to franny franny was after actually discussing mm-hmm. it about the Tika three and there just seems to be like blinders put on. And this, I think we have to give credit to the Tika three as well for mm-hmm. playing the game that they're playing so well, because people are missing it, even though right. we look at it and we think it's very clear, but there were also people on the tribe that saw it as well. So it, it can't be as hidden as I think Jamie thinks it is, or Jamie doesn't yeah, I mean, realize got, it is. Yeah, I mean, I think Evie even said, you know, when when they were playing, uh, there was, you know, they felt the same way, that there was, they were thinking there was a lot more opportunity, but actually there was a, a group that was banded together. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, maybe Jamie's in that same situation and we're just not seeing it. Right, yeah. So... Um, Now, one person who was spot on in tribal council was Heidi. Uh, She didn't say a ton, but she noted that, of course, you know, because Jeff always pushes the risk taking. Uh, Mm. And and she was like, well, of course you have to take risks, but it's a matter of when you do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, this runs counter to the ideas spread by Jeff, uh, which are wrong. Um, (laughs) Um, now, Heidi was also on target in a secret scene of the tribe getting tree mail for the challenge because she predicted exactly which one it would be while most of the rest of the tribe was poo pooing her for that idea. Oh, that's too old school. They wouldn't do that. So another another point for Heidi there. Right. Yeah. Listen, I like old school, but I also I don't like them bringing back all the challenges all the time either. But this one, uh, it's. It's a good one. And, and it's been a while. Say, Other than last season, it's been a yes, while since we right. saw it. Uh, was anyone else really concerned for Jam Jam? Yeah. Like, at the very... I, I was I was like, oh my God, is is he okay? Is anyone... Is he okay? Like, I was, I was legit concerned that he was drowned and no one was I think doing I, anything. I, I think my brother's girlfriend said the same thing. I, <laughs> brother, I, and, not my brother's I, girl, my son's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> then Danny jumped in to save the day, which I was like, thank you, because I really thought that there was something very, very wrong with Jam Jam at that point. Very wrong. Just, he was just cool, calm and collected. Just Apparently, another yes, day in he the was ocean. focused. He was yeah. very focused. But I thought for sure we were going to have another medical emergency happen on this uh, episode of Survivor. So. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, I was which I was does for him. bring about, by the way, my solution to winning this challenge in the future. So first, you just have to, no, no, no. <laughs> first, you have to make it to the final two. So that's the hard part. Mm. But then while you're there, like if it was me and you while I'm there, I yell, Jessica, you won. You come out now. And then you come out and and then I win. I, th- I don't know if they would. If that would be okay, but this is a fascinating idea. <laughs> wow, I wonder what they would do. I don't know. Jam Jam still wouldn't have heard them, but you know, no, if it he, was but... you know, under normal circumstances. So, oh, that's this is fascinating. You and your little tricks. <laughs> yes, I like this. Yes. <laughs> I want hmm. someone to try this. Um, and then they'll get yelled <laughs> at by Jeff. And, they will. David oh Cole. my gosh, he would um, get so mad. He would get so so mad, but I that sounds funny. Yeah, unless it happens to you, of course. Yeah, but I, well, yeah. I yeah I think you're I think you're in trouble. You're not winning. But if it's someone who's sitting, like I could see someone who is sitting who's not in the challenge anymore, pulling trying to pull something like that Ooh. because well they're already out of the challenge, right? Ooh, that would be mean. Yeah. So then it's not even wow. like I'm already out. Yeah. But. Yeah, there's. I mean, I'm sure there's some rule really about that. You really shouldn't be able to interfere. I think. But no, and I'm in, pretty sure that we were game. told that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we were told that, but yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> so now, for our uh, usual Jeff Probst is wrong about blank segment, we once again go to the "This is why Jeff sucks" section of his podcast. Um, now, most of this week's podcast was fairly harmless as he answered questions from fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in this section, uh, a viewer named Hillary hit him with a number of very valid criticisms about poor decisions uh, he's made. And even some of the things we've talked about here, like refusing to bring back the auction and saying it couldn't work, even though there were immediately a flood of ideas on how it could work. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff fired back. And it seems like people who criticize him are against experimentation or exploration or evolution, mm. which simply isn't true. But he just insists it. He denies. So he doesn't have to listen to anyone. Um, you know, people like us, we don't have a problem with experimenting. We have a problem with the specific experiments he's done that anyone with a little foresight could have seen would be problematic. Yes. And I think that is a very fair point because there there is a lot to be said about things like the auction that are inclusive of interactions amongst the players, Mm -hmm. right? Where even though it is something that is being run, if you will, by Jeff, you see people having to work against each other, Mm -hmm. having to consider what could be next. There's a lot of mental work that I think goes into a survivor auction. And then you can also, if you like trinkets like Jeff does, you could throw those in there too. Right. (laughs) So, you know, I do think that, that as a, it can have a great effect on the game. And if, and I, so to me, I feel like that's something that bringing back would be great as opposed to some of the new things that they have, tried and added that remove the actual component of the players and it's it's just production doing something that negatively affects half of the group or the other half of the group but it is not the players actually causing the outcome it's production causing the outcome yeah you know and that's the other thing it's not even you know i mean he would probably argue well you can't always foresee what the outcome will be even though we could oftentimes um you know, but sometimes he continues with the experiment mm-hmm. after it's after it's failed. Yeah. Final four fire making. Um, so mm. yeah, Jeff is still in denial, and that's not gonna change. Um, you know, one other thing in the podcast that made me roll my eyes uh was when his co-host Brittany, who is also a supervising producer on the show, said they try to keep as few rules as possible in the game. Meanwhile, she has previously applauded all the twists and advantages, which require more rules and fine print than a damn contract to buy a house. Yes. And also people misread them sometimes, which yeah. is interesting when yeah. that happens, right? <laughs> like, so, oh, wait, no, read the fine print. You can't do what you're about to do. Well, exactly. I mean, if yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. So, again, just it's no wonder she's on the podcast with Jeff because she is in perfect lockstep with him in terms of you know, not making a whole lot of sense. Well, I will say when I was doing some prep work for the podcast, I I often stumble into like a YouTube hole, if you will, or like a Google search hole. And I found something that made me think of you because it was entitled 45 rules of survivor. And I was like, wait, that sounds like, right. That sounds like Bloomberg, but there's 45, but then it just goes on to list all of these things that, that are rules in place for people who are playing the game, things they can and they cannot do. Oh, so like it's more of like a contract contractual yeah. type of thing. Yeah. But yeah. And that was one of the questions that was, you know, raised to Jeff was, you know, can you steal an idol? Can you, you know, some of this stuff, it's like, if you've been watching for any amount of time, you should know this already. Right. But yeah. People join in at different times. So that's sure. Funny. Absolutely. All right. Do you have any other things that you want to bring up uh, before we get to the rules? No, I just am. I am very excited about this particular episode as well. I think that it was it was nice to see such great gameplay as we've already discussed. And and I just think it's great that that we're seeing it. But it makes me sad at the same time, just because it is a shorter season. And Mm -hmm. I feel like if if we had been able to stretch this out a little bit more, maybe have these players play a longer game, maybe we would have seen more of this sooner. Maybe. And that, you know, that is one thing we didn't bring up. Of course, there was uh, news that uh, next season, at least, and you know, presumably the whole year, there will be 90 minute episodes of survivor. Right. And but is it, will, will it still be 26 that's, days? What, will it be what? 26 oh, 26 days. And that's the thing. Uh, you know, you can, go to my TikTok or YouTube or Instagram for any of these. Uh, but, you know, I I went through just briefly some of my, very briefly, uh, some of my thoughts like, well, this is what they should include. This is what they shouldn't do. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah. you can you can check those out. Um, and uh, but for now, uh, before we go 
to uh, talk about Danny, we should uh, mention that the rules we're about to discuss come in a shorter and much more colorful form. Which are not 45. <laughs> no, there are not 45. There are seven <laughs> plus two appendices. Um, 45 would be tough to fit on a poster. That would be uh, very tough to fit on a poster. Yeah. Yes. So go to Rob has a website dot com slash YX lost feed. Scroll down to that poster. Click on mm -hmm. it. Uh, you know, buy it. Love it. Live it like Carolyn. That's right. Um, scroll down and you can also get a T-shirt with the poster on it or a T-shirt with the checklist on it. Uh, yes, which so. I'm wearing today. Ah, very nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so, again, you can do that at robhaswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed. Huh. So, Danny, he said he doesn't want to be a coulda, woulda, shoulda dude. But as the old quote says, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Ooh. And the best way to learn is to look back at what happened previously to see what people could have, would have, and should have done differently. <laughs> In fact, as I noted earlier, it's kind of the point of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> Danny did very well in some areas, but for others, well, he definitely could have taken some pointers. Let's see what those were as we discuss why Danny lost. Oh, I thought you were going to say as we discuss why Danny could have, would have, should have. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't figure out. I could uh, not figure out how to uh, quite make that work. Um, we'll begin with the first and most important rule, scheme and plot. I think it's pretty clear that Danny was definitely doing this. Uh, he mm. made alliances within his Soka tribe. Then he made cross tribe alliances. Then he flipped against those alliances. Mm -hmm. etc. Uh, he discussed in some of his interviews how he was thinking ahead to try to ensure that nobody else ever got too far ahead in terms of numbers, you know, trying to keep things even. And that's one reason he took out Brandon by using his idol, even after they'd had discussions about working together. Mm -hmm. And also why he turned on Franny a couple votes later. He was always looking to move ahead, you know, towards the goal of obviously getting to the end. Yeah. And I thought that this was an interesting strategy because it's not one that we see very often. And I think this goes along the same idea that Jamie has been speaking to that there are no alliances and it sound very it sounds very much like this was what danny's idea was that he didn't want to commit himself to any particular group mm -hmm. he wanted to keep himself kind of floating and be very fluid about where he was going to end up playing next which i can appreciate and if you can pull it off that's a pretty great strategy mm -hmm. But at the same time, what type of damage are you doing to yourself? Because you're not gaining any loyalty to then bring it into the next vote and then get the numbers for the next vote because you are picking up this person, then you're taking that person out, and then you're picking right. up the next person and taking that person out. So if you can make this work, it's very impressive. But I also feel like it is a very difficult thing to do because Survivor really is about numbers because you need that those numbers in order to control the vote. Yeah. And he was, and this is one place he faltered. He seemed to focus purely on numbers, but not the type of numbers you're talking about. He mm -hmm. was tribal, original tribe. Numbers. Yes. Like, yes. Tika had three people so he could keep them around while knocking out uh Ratu and then even one of his own, but mm -hmm. he didn't seem to take into account, at least not at the time that those three on Tika were solid in a way nobody else was, which yes. made them more dangerous than their pure number would suggest. Mm hmm. Absolutely. You know, and then plus he presumed that everybody would play according to the logic that he saw in his own head. Mm hmm. You know, as he told Mike Bloom, he knew Lauren and Jamie weren't going to trust him, but he expected them to trust the logic of not wanting Tika to have three while one of the other tribes had two and the other just had one. And indeed, we, we saw Jamie getting some airtime to discuss accurate strategy for a change. Um, and I, I say airtime to discuss. We don't know what she, you know, she may have discussed it not on the air before, mm -hmm. but actually on TV. Um, saying Tika would pick them off one by one. And mm -hmm. Lauren also discussed how this move to target Carson made sense. But then they didn't follow through. No, um, and this is what is fascinating about the end result here is that mm -hmm. the the logic everyone 
didn't see it previously when Franny was talking about it. At that point, it wasn't logical if you're Danny, right? Because mm -hmm. he was like, oh, no. And he just poo-pooed that. And that wasn't something they were going to consider. Now, all of a sudden, he's thinking that, well, everyone else will see the logic in this because it makes the most sense. But clearly, they didn't see the logic in it. So I I'm really not sure where everyone is kind of imagining their end game to be because it's being discussed as the logical thing to do, but then no one is doing the logical thing. Well, what Danny thinks. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think Danny's logic made sense. It but, Well, but that's what I'm saying. It made sense for him this week. It didn't yes. make sense for him when Franny presented it to him. So Which it's I, like I, his I, logic I is even changing. I don't really disagree with that because when Franny, brought it up to him. He had a different plan in place, which was to mm. knock down Ratu. And also, I, I, and, and we discussed it at the time, I don't know that the Ratu people would have would have aligned with them to do it anyway. Yeah. You know, because both fair. sides thought that they had Tika with them. So, mm -hmm. you know, I so but this time what he has found out is that much in the same way that Vulcans on Star Trek often discover that humans don't always make what they consider to be fully logical decisions. Mm. The same is true about humans on Survivor. <laughs> um, you know, there are a lot of factors that come into play, some of which we'll discuss when we get to Appendix A. But the only way their actions make sense to me here is that they just didn't trust Danny. And, you know, mm. both Lauren and Jamie said at different points in this episode that they were nervous or worried about Danny. And I, I feel like lack of trust in Danny was a big part here of them going against him. Mm, interesting. To the point, maybe they didn't even believe that Carson was the real plan. Maybe they believe that they were the target. You Which know? would be, that's interesting just because, again, I mean, we are, we're limited in, mm -hmm. in scope and, and we have to, we have to make determinations based upon what the edit shows us. And I never got the sense that the others were being targeted by Danny. Heidi has been coming up now and again, but it it would be strange. I, but again, if you're paranoid, you're playing Survivor, anything is possible, and we, are, we aren't seeing it all. And I do think that part of Danny's issue with this strategy that he has been presenting, by having such a kind of dismissive attitude towards people you're playing the game with, probably helped them believe that if that's what mm -hmm. they were believing, if that's actually yeah. how they felt is that they couldn't trust him. It, it probably had a lot to do with the fact that I'm going to save Franny. Now I'm going to vote Franny out. Brandon's, you know, my, my guy, and I'm going to vote Brandon out. And yeah. so I'm curious if maybe that led them to think we can't trust Danny because he's certainly not trying to save people that he's previously saved. He's, He's knocking them out too. I don't know. So According to Jamie, we? everybody works with different people every time, anyway. So, and that's part of her logic. So, yeah, I, yeah it's it is it is definitely an interesting process that they seem to be going through and in, in determining yeah. who's going to be voted out next. Yeah. Now, another factor to consider is that Carson was the swapped in member of Ratu. Yes. And for a while, was considered to be like a full blown member, as mm -hmm. we discussed back in why Brandon lost. Um, now, we know he never truly was, but we also know he'd been kind of, you know, trying his best to blur the lines. We also know that Jamie erroneously believes what I just said. Everybody's working with different people each vote. Mm -hmm. I think Carson out schemed Danny here and must have convinced Jamie and Lauren that he was more trustworthy. And maybe, like I said, that they were being fed a fake plan. And that would make sense, too, just considering how everyone feels about Carson, which we learned in the yeah. tribal council. So I it, I wouldn't put it past Carson to be doing just that because he definitely seems to be able to sway people mm -hmm. in a way that we don't see very often. And I think it's part of that innocence that he's projecting yeah. as well. If he's projecting trust, Danny is not projecting trust. And right. so if you have to choose between one of those two people, you're likely going to pick the person that you feel that you can trust more than the one that you can't. Yeah. Now, of course, after all that discussion, it didn't matter anyway, because even if Lauren and Jamie had gone along with Danny, Carolyn's idol would have taken care of things. Um, sure. But either way, it's still a situation of being outplayed, you know, mm -hmm. whether by Lauren and Jamie or whether by Carolyn, you know, Danny assured the Tika three that there was another plan, 
but Carolyn didn't believe him. She mm -hmm. even tried to investigate, telling him she was open to voting Carson. Now, to Danny's credit, he didn't fall for it. Right. Um, you know, I don't know that anyone would fall for Carolyn saying, oh, I'll turn on Carson right now. But, you know, we don't know what all of the interactions have been there. But to Carolyn's greater credit, she still knew he was lying. Yes. And was so certain it was Carson instead of her that she played her idol to save him. Yeah, she had a great read on that whole situation, which I mm -hmm. thought was great. A great read was great. It was great. Yes. It was just her great. great read was great. <laughs> That's a great thing to say. Yeah, I really did appreciate how all of that came together. And I also liked that she called him out on it. Now, is this mm -hmm. the real plan or is this the fake plan? Which... Yes. Again, it, that's very Carolyn to do, but I, I really liked that she was willing to put that out into the universe as well. They're like, mm, yeah. maybe I'm on to you. Yeah. All right, well, we can move into the second rule, which says not to scheme and plot too much and to keep your scheming secret. Now, we've mentioned several times how uh, Danny, not necessarily just several times here, but several times over the course of time, uh, he had an affinity for talking about playing hard and becoming a mm -hmm. legend mm -hmm. and being great, like you just said, uh, and all of that. Uh, he added to it this week in saying, I didn't come here to take part. I came here to take over. Yeah. That's the problem. There is a mm. wide gap between these two positions. Mm -hmm. And making obvious attempts to take over, not historically been a successful survivor move, especially in the new era which admittedly he only had two seasons to see, but still mm -hmm. historically speaking, saying I'm going to be the one who takes over, not usually the winner. Yeah. And he wasn't just saying it every once in a while. Like it, I mean, I know right. the luncheon was a discussion that was had uh, lots of people asked him about that with his exit interviews and what that was all about. But I think that that what we saw him do there with Brandon had a ripple effect clearly because Carolyn didn't let that go. And she definitely mm -hmm. remembered how he made her feel during that moment. And so there is this, this problem of being too forward, too honest in how you want to play the game. But then at the same time, there were things that Danny was doing that he didn't want to tell other people. So it was this very interesting mix that he presented where I'm going to be very big and bold and boisterous, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you all of the things that I'm going to win. But at the same time, I'm going to sneak around and I'm going to hide idols and I'm not going to tell people that this is fake and I'm going to mess with this over here. And so it, it was such an interesting dynamic because he was playing a very sneaky, quiet, and he appreciated the fact that Carolyn didn't tell anyone about her idol either. So like, mm -hmm. there's this component of him that he got that. He did understand it, but he still wanted to be bigger than life and wanted everyone to see what he was doing in addition to trying to hide parts of his game as well. Yeah, I mean, he was often the one going around telling people to move, so he was a focus of attention. Yes. Um, and he told Mike Bloom that his game revolved around the idea that if he got to Final Three, he was going to be an obvious winner because of all he'd mm. done. Mm -hmm. The problem, as we've often discussed, is you have to get to yes. Final Three. Right. And with all his talk about being a legend and being great, when when other people see the possibility of that happening... They aren't going to let you, uh, yeah. you know, just as he wanted to make it clear that he should win. If he got to the end, Jam Jam was correct last week in saying you use the smoke and mirrors to cover up what you're doing. But mm -hmm. that was you know, Danny wasn't doing that. No, he definitely and he was, was lighting not. fires to let the smoke come over to help Jam Jam, you know. <laughs> um, now, Dalton Ross also asked him a perfect question on a point that. I've been making on social media and TikTok and maybe here, I can't remember, but Dalton said, you said at one point that it's not good enough to just win Survivor, but you have to be great along the way. Yet mm. your strategy was to take out all the great people, which mm -hmm. is a good strategy. But what about the scene at Tribal where you're saying that, but going for Franny at the same time for being great? Now, basically, the question was, did Danny recognize that he was going after the very people who were doing the things that he was promoting? Right. Unfortunately, I think Danny misunderstood the question. He either missed mm, that mm -hmm. part of it or it was right. too convoluted or whatever. 
um, because it didn't seem like he got what he was driving at because his answer was to agree that you should take out the great players. And if you can take a, if you take a shot at the King, you'd best not miss, which is yeah. what happened with Carson. Um, I was hoping he'd address how that fit in with his strategy of being great, but it, it was not meant to be. Yeah, that was definitely, uh, not a great answer. See, I'm going to go with that term again. Yeah, <laughs> Very nice. Uh, now there were a number of instances of Danny playing hard, but there were a couple specific ones this week. Uh, part of it was in the way he presented his plan to Carolyn, which you already mentioned, uh, you know, where she was saying you should always be suspicious of someone who says that's the plan. No need to discuss it. Done. Right. Uh, which was her way of summarizing it. And I, I think a lot of it is just, you know, the way Danny works, like you said. And as he told Mike Bloom, you could probably see from my gameplay, I don't really hesitate. But most players, you know, including Carolyn, do a lot of thinking and rethinking. And I'm not saying he didn't think, but once he arrived at a decision, that was it. He was decisive yes. and he moved forward and he he didn't want to talk about it really anymore, which could yes. be interpreted by others as not being truthful, not wanting to talk about it. Um, and, you know, the same sort of miscommunication happened last week when he was talking to Heidi and he was like, we don't even need you, which was not what he intended to convey. Right. But that's how it came across. Yes. And that's again, I think that you've explained it quite well, that that is just the way I think Danny is in that comes from what he does with with his career and just how he is in life but when you're playing survivor you have to be very aware of how you're presenting your ideas to other people because the way that he said that to Heidi definitely sounded like he was just dismissing her like you don't even mm -hmm. matter like we don't even need you we're fine that's yeah. not what he meant to say but that's exactly how it sounded and that was how I think most people that heard it thought he mm -hmm. meant it to be. And unfortunately, when you play Survivor, people don't get an opportunity to really learn who you are as a person when they have to start playing this game with you. And so they're seeing these things happen and they are interpreting it as this is how he's playing his game. Not, well, this is just how Danny is. We know a little bit more about Danny because we've obviously mm -hmm. read things about him and we've learned things about him before we watch the season unfold. Players don't have that. And so they are just reacting to what they are seeing and they are reacting as they would in real life if someone were to dismiss them in that fashion. And so it's just unfortunate that he was so forward and in being so forward, it became misread often and certainly I think negatively affected his game for sure. Yeah, I mean, you of all people have experience with this because someone said something to you in your season like, ah, We'll just, you know, we'll abandon you if things go that way. Yeah. And it 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 probably wasn't exactly what he meant to say or mm -hmm. how he meant to present it, but he did. And you were like, oh, crap. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, which, and then, you know, you took that back to to uh, the women on your tribe and you turned against him. And then later people were like, oh, well, he must not have said that. So let's target Jessica now. Um <laughs> It's like, yeah, no, he so did I, say that. He did. He said it more than once, multiple yeah. times. And and this is, I think this is what makes the game of Survivor so very difficult because you don't have very long to necessarily talk with people. You don't really have a chance. I mean, you can go back and try to seek clarification, but this isn't real life when you're playing survivor, it's not like a, a real life, like discussion mm -hmm. or a work issue or a, a relationship issue. This is a game for a million dollars. So everything that you say matters because right. people will read into it. They will overthink it. They have nothing else to do with their time besides think about the game. Right. So it's not like they can like spend time on TikTok mm -hmm. to distract themselves. They are literally just thinking about the game and they're processing everything that they hear and what they see and who's talking to who. And so in those moments, you have to be very aware of how you are communicating with every person around you, because yes, I definitely heard him say this to me and said, wait a second, I'm, I'm not, I'm, certainly not um, right. a, a guy. And they were 
it was, you know, and it was, hey, you know, right. it was going to be all going to be all boys. I'm going with the boys and good luck to you. And oh, yeah. OK, <laughs> yeah. so I guess I'm being left behind. Yeah. So, yes, words matter for sure when right. you play Survivor. Right. Mm hmm. All right. Well, the third rule tells players to be flexible. And I think in some ways, Danny was very flexible, while in other ways, he was absolutely not. Yes. Um, <laughs> looking back to what we were discussing in the first rule, he went back and forth according to what he believed served his best interests at the time. Uh, as he told Rob, he wanted a malleable game of fluidity. Now, as a former material science engineer, I appreciate his use of those two words. You don't often hear malleable and fluidity alone mm -hmm. or especially together. So I appreciate that. Well, I think it's probably a very good representation of his game, right? That you certainly don't see a lot of these things alone mm -hmm. and together in, yeah. in his gameplay. Because this is what I, I see. It's like the resonating theme with his game, right? Is that he would do things and you're like, wow. That's interesting. And then he would do the exact opposite. And you're like, wait a second, what about over here? What is happening? And so the fact that he's either the most flexible person we've ever seen mm -hmm. or completely not flexible at all, it really fits with the way that Danny was playing this game. He's flexible because, between being flexible and not flexible. Yeah, it, it was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, another way he was flexible was he said in his interviews he didn't have any connection to what happened before in terms of someone like voting mm. for him previously. And that's why he was telling Heidi it didn't matter. Now, yeah. I'm not sure I completely buy that part because he also formed a solid alliance with Heidi. So he obviously did have some connections to what happened before. Sure. And of course, he would have worried about someone who targeted him previously. But I think it goes along with some of the other aspects we'll discuss in the next rule that he didn't get specifically emotionally connected to it. You know, like earlier, mm. Ram Jam was saying, you vote for him and you leave. Yeah. And he wouldn't would not necessarily feel that way. He would be able to move past it if it made strategic sense for him to do at a particular time. Yes. He's very game oriented and, yes. and game centered in that regard where yes. it's not. It, there was no emotion. It was going to be, this is about game. And if this is the move that's going to help me get further, then this is what I'm going to do. If that's a move that's going to help somebody else get further, I can understand that too. And he actually talked about that with the the Heidi vote and, and Heidi writing his name down. And he said, well, if it had worked and I had gone home, well, then great for Heidi because mm -hmm. Heidi's plan would have worked. And so he he really has an interesting way of, of viewing the game as a construct that it is about winning. And it's something that we've talked about very right. often is that that's what the goal should be is that you want to win the game. And so his purpose was always to win and he was willing to maneuver and he was willing to switch and try things that were different, but it was never going to be about anything other than what's the next best move. And it's not about my personal feelings at all. Right. And, and we'll get to that second part in a minute, but First, you know, to get back to the part about him not being flexible, it it does go to some of how he played. You know, we go to what we discussed in the second rule about him making a decision. And that was that, mm -hmm. you know, as we said, most players like to bounce ideas around and consider options, which also tends to make others feel more involved. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there was his view of how to play the game. Uh, we previously discussed how he and Jeff talked about full tilt boogie being the only way to play. But clearly that's not true. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though he came in with that incorrect idea, Danny needed to realize or recognize what was going on around him and adjust to avoid going out the same way he'd sent out Brandon and Franny. Yes, which again goes back to that game that he was playing that didn't seem to make sense but it made sense. It's a very strange dynamic that he was presenting because you yeah. are not wanting to put the target on you, but at the same time you are putting the target directly on you by targeting other people who are just like you. Right. Right. Exactly. So yeah, I'd say in some for this rule, he was flexible in terms of who he was going after, but not in terms of the way he played. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now moving into the fourth rule to get what, you know, it's kind of hard to talk about some of these things without interspersing in this case, but uh, this rule tells players not to let their emotions control them. And 
as you mentioned, he certainly excelled here. Mm -hmm. Uh, As he told Rob and others, his way of playing was nothing personal, strictly business. Yes. And he even used a comparison that I often use, telling Dalton, it's like poker. Am I not going to bluff my friends just because I like them? You know, and he's 100 percent right. I mean, you know, I used to play poker against my friends all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Yeah, I had to bluff them. I had to make moves against them. They did the same to me. You know, it's the game. And that's how he played this. Um, You know, on the show, Danny described the idea of separating emotions from the game as Survivor 101. So he had the right idea, but the wrong name. He should have said it's rule four. But also, though, there is something to be said about his unwillingness to even, like, wiggle just a little bit on this rule too because he was distancing himself from people that he was playing the game with by removing that emotional component entirely i mean there were so there were several scenes of emphasizing this side of him like when heidi and jamie were talking about writing jam jam's name down and the other two were both like it'll be painful but they do it and he was like uh no it won't be painful um you know That could be seen by some people as a little weird, Um, but it feels like the rest of this group just they view everything as the game. You know, Jamie even talked about that, like we can all sit here and meditate and then tomorrow go after each other. Sure. I, I think this group just as a whole has done a very good job of following rule four and you know there was a secret scene of danny talking to carolyn where we saw two different sides of this rule because of course carolyn is an emotional person who -hmm. acknowledges she's playing an emotional game but also knows she has to put those emotions aside when necessary Mm -hmm. and as she said there's a difference between playing the game and taking things personally meanwhile danny is more like no everybody is a chess piece and I can be friends with you, but I'm still going to sacrifice you as a pawn if I need to. Right. And so it's like yeah. two different ways of following the same rule. Sure. And I think that this type of gameplay, it almost gives the other players permission yes. to vote you out because Danny will understand why, because he mm-hmm. will see it as a game move and he'll get it. And so Danny's the type of person you want on your jury, right? Yes. Because he's not going to be angry with you he's going to be proud of you for making a game move and he's going Mm -hmm. to be impressed with the decision that you made and why you did it so as far as a juror is concerned yeah danny's the one you want to have oh absolutely 100 percent. because he's gonna say great move and then he's gonna tell the rest of the jury it was a great move yeah you know um now another example of him following this rule was the way he first saved and then voted out franny um, I, I've been saying, and I think I've been saying this mostly on social media, though we might have mentioned it last week here too, that him saving Franny had nothing to do with saving Franny. Mm-hmm. It was all about him making a move for himself, knocking out Brandon and changing the numbers. Yeah. So as he told Mike Bloom, it was just straight strategic. So then when the situation changed, he had no qualms about voting her out. And he further told Mike, I loved Franny. I love Franny now. If that wasn't the case, I still would have done the same thing. I brought zero real emotion into my gameplay. Yeah. I mean, to him, it was like playing a game of Monopoly, chess, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Okay, uh, I lost. We can restart the game. You know, it's it's obviously, know. you know. If you ever play Monopoly with my son, you're going to learn. Well, yeah, we, we don't. Play it's a little Monopoly. emotional. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We don't play Monopoly in our house. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. I couldn't even imagine you play Monopoly. Yeah, mm. that wasn't me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I may have been involved, but um, mm. but um, but yeah, I just mean, you know, he kind of plays Survivor as if it was, you know, just, OK, we're playing a game up. Oh, now we're done. Oh, tomorrow's another game night. I know it's fascinating because like, he's just like, yeah, I'll just get to do it again. Right. Uh, no, maybe you won't yeah. ever. <laughs> maybe he will. Who knows? Um, Cause I mean, he's, you know, he agreed with Jeff on everything. So that's a good reason for Jeff to bring him mm, back. That's true. Yes. So big moves. Yes. Uh, 
Full tilt boogie. Um, now, the fifth rule reminds players they need to pretend to be nice and play the social game. Now, it's interesting to follow up what we just discussed in the fourth rule about Danny playing with zero real emotion. So how do you think he did here? Because you were kind of mentioning uh, maybe this put some people off. Yeah, well, I I remember back at the beginning, towards the beginning of the season, where he really seemed to be the one on the tribe that was kind of bringing everyone together and seemed to be the entertainer, if you will. And was it, I was, I was impressed because I, I didn't think that Danny was going to connect with people in the way that he did, but it seemed as if he was the leader of his tribe, but also people seemed to enjoy him. And so there wasn't any issues that I necessarily saw for him at the beginning, but I think as the game progressed and as he got his footing and kind of figured out how he wanted to play this game, then it wasn't necessarily that he was bad socially. It was presentation, really. It was just the way that he was communicating with people. And so it wasn't like he didn't want to formulate connections with someone for that particular move. But the presentation in it, that went along with it wasn't always great. Mm -hmm. And then people could misread it and think that there was something else happening there as opposed to, I'm just talking game. I'm not talking relationship right. right now. I'm literally just talking game. So I think it really just boils down to his inability to kind of put the two together that if you want to play like this game, like it is chess, you still have to communicate with the person who's across from you in a way that makes them feel interested in the outcome and that you are interested in them as a person as opposed to just a chess piece yeah i i feel like he still became friends with the other players oh for sure you know i mean he discussed how he did breath work with franny each day mm -hmm. and uh i think there was a discussion on the show about how he and lauren were at odds strategically at one point but became friends mm -hmm. um it's i mean Obviously, there was one person who would disagree that he did well socially, uh, that being Carolyn, which, mm -hmm. you know, of course, stemmed from their original meeting at the sanctuary and went from there. Um, and, and I did appreciate the way Danny answered interview questions about how he acted at the sanctuary. Mm. You know, some people would just say, no, it was the editing. I wouldn't do that. But Danny acknowledged that while he didn't think so at the time, maybe it was something that could have happened. And he can learn from it, be more compassionate and be more thoughtful. Uh, he even told Mike Bloom, it would be very easy for me to be like, oh, the edit. It's very easy to be like, no, no, no. Woe is me. So I'll say this. I can't witness myself. I was witnessed by people. So they would have a better depiction of how I came across. Yeah. Um, so, you know, clearly there was a divide between him and Carolyn. I think a lot of it is just big differences in their personalities. Yeah, I think so. So we can move to the sixth rule, which warns against being too much of a threat. And considering we discussed in the second rule how he was purposely trying to make it known that he should win if he got to the end. Do you think he was at all seen as a threat? I would say yes, <laughs> definitely. And 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 here's the thing. He elevated his own threat level by pointing out to all of the other people who needed to go home because they were a threat when mm -hmm. they were doing the same things that that Danny was doing. So it is a very interesting. See, look, now you all get to see my dog. Oh, good. <laughs> Bloomberg loves this, everyone. He's so happy that I invited the puppies to join <laughs> in this. But but yeah, so I do think that his threat level was certainly something that he put on display and wanted people to see because he did say, if I'm getting to the end, I am winning. Right. That sounds pretty threatening. I would, yeah. I would think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he, made himself a threat and pretty much bragged about it. And, you know, yeah. you know, as Jeff was saying, full tilt boogie was the only way to go. Danny was right there with him. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as you mentioned in that same episode, he voted out the person who arguably played the most full tilt. Uh, yes. So he knew to vote out threats, but I guess he hoped that people wouldn't do the same to him. He, even though I said back when Danny knocked out Brandon that it would start the threat dominoes falling and here we are. Yeah. And this goes back to what we've been talking about and how his game was 
it, it was just so incredibly mixed because there were things that like he he wanted to win and he wants to be, as you said, full tilt boogie. But nobody else could be because then he was going right. to vote them out. So it's yeah. like this very strange balance that I there there would have been nothing other than Danny getting voted out by approaching the game in the way that he was because he was making it OK to vote out the people that were just like him. Right. Yeah. And then beyond being a threat in general, one big factor was, of course, that Danny was specifically a threat to the Tika three as he was targeting Carson. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and and one thing we should also mention is that Danny did very well in challenges coming in second several times. Mm -hmm. Now, as the other challenge threats fell away, this put him into a better potential position. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was as important an issue, but it was funny because after Carolyn on the show talked about how Danny was lying and needed to go, she kind of made like a side comment about, oh, yeah, and he's potentially good in challenges. So that's kind of how I'm making it now. (laughs) Just a little side thing, a little extra. Yeah. All right. The seventh rule covers idols and advantages and game mechanics. And of course, we saw Danny play his idol to save Franny and then vote her out to tribal councils later. We've already discussed this plenty. But just to wrap it up again, he made the move to further his own game and used wisely used the information provided to him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, Danny also planted the fake birdcage idol for Matt, which gave him something he could use. Theoretically, because it never actually came to real fruition. Mm. Uh, Danny said in one of his interviews that he thought about holding it for the merge to use as a fake, but who knows if he'd even get to the merge, so might as well go for it. Um, And honestly, even if he had tried to use it as a fake, by then everybody else swapped information about it. So, you know, Brandon opening it in front of his whole tribe really messed it up for everybody else when it came to yeah. planting fakes, you know? Yeah, no, that definitely had some ripple effect too, didn't yeah. that? But, yeah. but I, I do appreciate the fact that Danny was able to manipulate Matt the way that he did, just to mm-hmm. kind of guide him to where it was Yeah, and to make people look in places, because didn't he do this twice? Didn't he suggest or was that just with matt about that where the matt. that was just with matt but matt I, you that, also did it to jamie that's who i knew i had yeah. seen someone else do it in my head i was seeing jamie um so but yeah so i i can appreciate that game component as mm-hmm. well that you are kind of leading the person there sneakily and then it's working yeah. and they found it and ta-da and then you oh we have to look in the roots of trees i'll look over <laughs> here you look over there And it worked. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of looking for idols beyond that, we saw him looking a lot and apparently everybody at camp knew it too. And that's why we heard speculation from Carolyn that he might have one because apparently everyone thought it was a possibility or even a likelihood, but Heidi beat him to the punch on that one. Well, and I think that that's very Danny like as well. I'm not going to hide the fact that I'm looking for Mm -hmm. idols. Because that's part of the way he played this game. He was going right. to be very flashy and put it on display. And, hey, this is this is what we're here to do. We're here to play Survivor and idols are a part of it. I'm going to go look for idols. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> All right. We could go to Appendix A, which is about the tribe keeping their end goals in mind when voting. And we talk about voting out the weak, then the strong, then the weak, then the strong. We're still at the strong point where people are voting out the threats. And we've already discussed Danny in that regard. Uh, It's fairly obvious why Carson, Jam Jam, and Carolyn would want to vote out Danny. And although with 2020 hindsight, Carolyn didn't actually need to use the idol, I still think she did the right thing because if I were her, I wouldn't have trusted Jamie and Lauren to vote that way. Right. To to steal a line from Danny. It was illogical for them to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the the numbers too, if you just kind of look at what it could have been versus what it turned out to be. It could have been a three-way tie if, if the votes had fallen differently. And yeah. and then Carson at least would have not been considered in that then revote. So that's mm-hmm. a huge bonus as well. So it is a tricky thing to calculate in that moment because you are having to put your trust in two people that you haven't really been playing the game with and right. trusting in that way. And yes, it did seem illogical for them to vote 
for anyone other than Carson at this point. So the fact that she utilized it, even though incorrectly, it, it certainly made sense for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we saw Carolyn think for a long time about how to vote and then eventually write Lauren's name, cross it out and put Danny's name. Uh, I think she was worried about what would happen if they put all their votes on Danny and he played an idol and one of them threw a vote her way. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think she was thinking, oh, if I throw a vote at Lauren, then at least, you know, we won't have that situation. But I think in doing all the math, she realized that she'd lose on a revote anyway. Mm. So why bother at that point? Yeah. Um, you know, that's got to be what all the counting on her fingers in the voting booth was about. There was a lot of counting happening. It was. Um, math is hard on very little sleep. <laughs> oh, um, yes. <laughs> yes. So um, now earlier we discussed Lauren and Jamie making a move that didn't seem logical to us. It must have made sense to them. But of we just course. haven't been seeing it. Uh, yeah. Lauren certainly seemed to be suggesting as much on Twitter because she didn't seem very happy with the reception of this move, saying when others play the middle, they're strategic beast. But when we do side eye emoji, uh, make up y'all mind. <laughs> um, now, someone just someone on Twitter replied to her and said the difference is Tika played the middle while successfully maintaining control and manipulating both sides against each other. And Lauren responded, did that last week. Um, so she clearly thought she was playing differently from what we're being shown. And unfortunately, we're not seeing much of her, which makes it difficult to tell. Yeah. Um, you know, from her standpoint, it's, you know, based on that, it seems she believed that they were playing the middle. I don't quite understand the middle of what exactly, unless yeah. it goes back to believing Carson is actually with them, not with Carolyn and Jam Jam, because that's about the only thing that makes any sense to me. And it would be interesting if that's what they are seeing out there, because it doesn't seem to be what is being presented. And again, I know the edit can mm -hmm. certainly do things, but to have other people discussing the Tika three, I'm not sure how you miss that. I mean, if Carson's good enough and says to them, hey, they think we're with them, let's just let them keep thinking that. But I'm really with you two. But has he been voting uh, with those two all along? He has some, a, a number of the times he was uh, like he, you know, remember, he voted for Franny when he knew when Franny was when the idol going was to be played. saved. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he knew that. So it made it look like he was with them. No, um, that's fair. Now, he didn't or. I don't think he did the next time, um, but um, but then he went back to voting Franny, you know, right. and so I, I don't know. But then again, mm -hmm. you know, Jamie thinks everybody does something different every time. So sure. And knows? so does Danny. Yeah. <sighs> it's hard to judge in that situation. Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, eventually we'll find out. Obviously, within yes. within the next, I'd say, uh, two and a half weeks. Yes, um, eventually. Yeah. Uh, but we can move to Appendix B in the meantime, which deals with the jury phase of the game. And, you know, we already discussed multiple times how he was trying to play in such a way that if he had made it in front of the jury, he wouldn't even have to discuss it because it would be so obvious he should win. Mm -hmm. um, as we further talked about, this meant nobody else would want to go with him to the end to face the jury. Mm hmm. Also, I think they all knew that they could turn on him. Well, actually, you already brought this up and he would not make it personal because yes. that was his mantra. Mm -hmm. So good. He's a perfect person to have sitting on the jury with a move that you made because he's just going to be giving you, you a thumbs up there. Yeah, he will be the like happiest, most kind juror member i really mm -hmm. think because he will be complimenting people's games but he will also hold people accountable for their moves because he's going to want them to justify why yes. they did what they did so yes. that will be interesting to see him asking those types of questions as well like explain to me why this was a good game move for mm -hmm. you and you know maybe that goes back to the the heidi questions that people have been asking like why you know danny might 
say to her, why did you put my name down? Tell me why that was a good game move. And if she justifies it, if she's in the final three, you know, that's something that I, he would probably be curious about. Mm -hmm. So I think he's, I think he's really going to ask some pointed questions, but good ones that will make people have to explain the game as opposed to just themselves and, and what it, like he's, yeah. he's not going to be looking for those touchy feely kind of, kind of questions and answers. It's really going to be about, tell me why this was a, a move that you needed to do for the, your game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people who play survivor and they say, I will respect a good game move. And then they get, they're on the jury and they're like, oh, I can't believe you voted me out. I'm voting. Right. I'm not voting for you for that reason. Danny's right. not going to be that way. I can no. virtually guarantee he mm -hmm. is not going to be that way. He is going no. to be on the jury. What we always say, someone should be on the jury. Mm -hmm. Yes. At least I think he will. Obviously. We I think can't so. Say for sure. I agree with you. All right. David Bloomberg. So what you're saying is. David, you're right. <laughs> David, you're right. David, you're right. <laughs> um, all right. Well, it's time to wrap things up. So what are your final thoughts? Well, my final thoughts on full tilt boogie is that maybe that's not the best way to always play Survivor, but it's a hell of an interesting way to play Survivor, right? Because yeah. what we saw from Danny, I'm, I'm both baffled and fascinated with because everything he did was almost counterproductive and and that's the thing that i i just i keep scratching my head about like i want everyone to see everything i'm doing because i will win this game because i am the biggest threat but over here i want to vote out all of the biggest threats as well so okay you got your wish danny you became one of the biggest threats and they voted you out for it so i guess you actually did accomplish what you were hoping to accomplish because you went full tilt boogie and found yourself now a member of the jury. But I'm very excited to see you as a member of the jury because I do think that it, you will ask great questions because of the way that you have played this game. You certainly looked at it like it was a chess game, that these people were all pieces. You weren't interested in formulating bonds that were so strong that you would feel some emotional tie or a, an emotional issue with voting someone out it was all about game and i can certainly respect that but i also am just somewhat confused <laughs> in the end because i i there are just so many questions but i will say that we we got a lot of great content from danny and i and i have to agree he was fun to watch and really went in there wanting to play survivor and really accomplishing so many things while he played the game that People who often play the game walk away from going, God, I wish I had done that. And that's not Danny. Danny didn't walk away from this game saying, I wish I had done that. Danny did it. And then Danny got voted out for it. So, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, you can't have it all, Danny. But it, it, but thanks for playing. It was certainly fun. If you go back, then maybe you'll win an individual immunity next time. But so he's got his bucket list for the next yeah. time he goes back out yeah. for sure. Yeah, I, I I want to start here at the end by saying some players get to their interviews and try to backtrack or say their actions weren't what they appeared. I appreciate that Danny didn't do that. Mm. Uh, now, I, I don't agree with everything he said because we have significant differences on gameplay, in case nobody's noticed. But he acknowledged that there were certain times with maybe he didn't come across as he intended, um, like with Heidi or with Carolyn at the sanctuary. So kudos to him for that. Hmm. As for gameplay, though, Danny was definitely in the Jeff Probst, full tilt boogie, big moves, no coulda, woulda, shoulda, balls to the wall camp. As he said, he wanted it to be clear if he made it to final three that he should be the winner. But by making it that clear, everybody else knew too. Uh, mm. Meaning that according to the logical thinking he always tried to use, there was no way they should ever let him get that far. And on top of that, he, as you said, led the charge to vote out other people who played those same big games, thereby setting a precedent. Danny did some things very well, like completely splitting off his emotions from the decisions he had to make in the game because he knew that was what it was, a game. He wouldn't even agree that it would feel bad to vote out one of his friends. But mm -hmm. Danny should have done some things differently. 
he could have been better at plotting and maybe he would have not been out schemed at the end, whether by Carolyn sussing out his real plan and playing the idol or by Carson getting Jamie and Lauren on his side or by Jamie and Lauren independently working on some mystery plan of their own. All of them recognized Danny as a threat, either directly to their games at the time or to them winning at the end. He said that he didn't come to take part. He came to take over and he tried, but everybody else saw that and nobody wanted him taking over the game that they wanted to win. And that mm. is why Danny lost. That was good. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. All right. Well, before we get to our predictions, just want to remind everyone that uh, you can, of course, uh, get these rules that we just discussed in mm. poster form. Uh, hang beautiful. up in your house. Hang up in your office. Hang up mm -hmm. in both places like I did. Sure. Um, uh, and you can go to robhaswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed. You can also get it on a shirt, which you can wear in your house and at work and wherever else you want. <laughs> uh, and you can get the checklist shirt as well, just like the one being modeled by my lovely co-host. Oh, look at that. Yay. <laughs> yeah, uh, order it all. It's great. It's good yes, stuff. Yes, order it all. And... Uh, and how can they then tell us that they've ordered it so that they can, you know, show us pictures so they can of them brag. wearing Yes, and they can, they can point to us and say, look, I really did buy your poster. Don't talk mm -hmm. about me on your podcast anymore like Carolyn did. Yes. <laughs> so I am at Jessica Lewis 89 on Twitter, and you can certainly follow me there. I do tweet uh, during the week and also live tweet during the episodes, as does David Bloomberg, who I... I just want to say it is not just about Twitter with David Bloomberg. He has a whole link tree that will direct you to all of the places that you can find all of the David Bloomberg content. He is not only on Twitter, but he is also on TikTok, YouTube, reality TV, everything you can imagine on Instagram. You name it, he's there. So you should definitely go to his link tree account and follow everything David Bloomberg. Yes, and you can see that uh, below me there, uh, link tree slash David Bloomberg with a dot before the EE. -E. Uh, and of course, um, I am, you know, to make it easy, if you don't have that link tree handy, uh, I'm on all the different video sites, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube as David Bloomberg TV. Lots of TikToks. Lots of TikToks, uh, average of three per day. Uh, sometimes I'll throw in a farmer wants a wife. Uh, TikTok just to spice things up. Um, but uh, yeah, there's lots of rule four TikToks this week. I'm going to say uh, there's going to be at least uh, three or four of them because, as I said earlier in the podcast, everybody's playing that way. Mm hmm. Good. So, stuff. prediction time. Dun dun dun. I don't like prediction. Yeah. Well, you got to do it. Uh, I know. <laughs> I know that the preview made it seem like Jam Jam and Carson are going to turn on Carolyn. I give it approximately a 0% chance of mm. that happening. Mm -hmm. And I cite to Hubicki's law on that as supporting, supporting precedent. Uh, those three are in it together to the end, as far as they're concerned. Mm -hmm. We know that Heidi still has her idol. It's possible she could try to hold it for the final time she can use it. I think she's going to play it just to be safe, especially since, you know, she gets votes every single exactly, time. Exactly. Yeah. And there's no more Danny to take the heat off of her. Yeah. Um, so that leaves Lauren and Jamie, who apparently believe they were making some sort of move this week. If they do believe Carson is with them, they may send two votes one way, thinking that he will add to it for a majority. Mm. But he's really just distracting them. Mm -hmm. And I, think that's basically what will happen and then i think the tika three will vote as a unit against lauren mm. now admittedly i'm picking lauren because for a little while now i've been thinking that the final four are going to be the tika three plus jamie and voting out lauren makes sense as the next step for that to happen yes See, when I was initially looking at all of the permutations of this last week, I had said I thought it would be Lauren. I think between she and Jamie, Lauren is 
probably the one that the Tika three would be a little more concerned with. Uh, I think that what we're seeing from Jamie is not as much game mechanics really being presented to us. And so I feel like between the two, Lauren makes more sense. I, I'm curious though, because I know Heidi has her idol and I was really leaning towards Heidi, but the idol is what is stopping me from thinking that it's going to be Heidi because out of those three, it makes the most sense to vote Heidi, Mm -hmm. but no one knows about her idol. Right. Right. But she, you know, I, I, I think she's going to play it. Well, right. But no one knows about her idol. So I'm, I'm only, I'm throwing that out there because I wonder if there is going to be some, division with the votes because it would be very easy to go to lauren and jamie and say hey we're all voting for heidi Mm -hmm. and then have the tika three put their votes on lauren just in case well yeah that's what i'm that's pretty much what i'm thinking is going to happen yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. so i think that i think lauren makes the most sense in that structure knowing that heidi's got an idol that no one knows about yeah all right we are agreed uh so um if i'm right you're right it's convenient because then i can't play my play your song um (laughs) i just can't i i i I don't know this the tika three i just i boy if they ended up in the final three together that would be i don't think they will i think someone one of them is going to get knocked out in fire making i don't disagree i I don't disagree two of the tika three plus jamie I think will be the final. Three. I I agree. I think Jamie is in the final just, three as well. I just don't know which of the two Tika three. I think it's going to be Carson because of all the fire in his glasses and that scene where he's like standing over the fire, like looking like a, I, what was that? <sighs> anyway, I don't know. So, so all much right, well, fire associated with yes, Carson. Yes. Uh, I want to encourage people to check out the RHAP patron program at robhaswebsite.com slash patron. Uh, You can get access to special podcasts and Facebook groups and Discord and perhaps most importantly, support shows like ours and everything Mm -hmm. on the network. So again, go to robhaswebsite.com slash patron or just click on the link at robhaswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed. There's a uh, a patron link on there too. Uh, So, you know, Make sure to do that. And then if you go to the Facebook groups, say hello to us there, as well as all the other places you talked about already. Yes, you definitely uh, should. Also, make sure you're subscribed to all the reality TV rehab up podcasts by going to Rob has website.com slash rehab ups feed. Uh, you'll not only find all the survivor content, but a ton of non survivor content, too. And of course, we're inching towards summer, which means there will be big brother content on this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, again, you know, go subscribe to the Rehap Ups feed to get all of that. Oh, I can do thank yous. So we would like to thank everyone who makes this possible at our HAP. So thank you, Scott, Jill, and Derek, for all of the editing that you do on all of the podcasts, not just the Why Blank Lost podcast, but all of the content that you do see. Thank you for the incredible editing. It's a lot of work, and you do it very late in the middle of the night, and it's lovely to see posted first thing in the morning so thank you for that thank you to chelsea for all of the posts that you create relative to the rhap content and everything that is put out thank you to tricky for the artwork that you see displayed throughout not just this podcast but all of them so thank you so much for that and thank you to will from america for the theme song we love it it's very catchy and we appreciate it thank you so david i know that there are people still commenting on youtube that say hey what where's the song we haven't haven't heard it if you if you listen to the audio version it's there automatically i need to figure out if we can get it on here also Uh, yes i put a video for those that are missing it yeah so listen you have the song of me singing throw that in there too that's on video not (laughs) audio yeah i don't know but yes and so thank you david for another podcast this was lovely. Uh, it was great. It was yes, great. It was great. Yes. Thank you, <laughs> Jessica, for another great week. Uh, I also want to uh, wish you a happy Mother's Day uh, oh, this weekend. Thank you. And to all the other moms out there, too. 
Yes. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers and happy Mother's Day to my mom, who is one of our biggest fans. So thank you, mom, for always listening. We really appreciate it. And the messages that she sends me while we are actually watching the show (laughs) are very entertaining. So I fully appreciate my mom for so many reasons, but also her loving support of this and everything survivors. Yes. Happy Mother's Day to her as well. Uh, With that, we will be back here in one week, so we will see everybody then. Bye.